Violet. Are you very angry? Did you want to kill the victim? Out of everyone here tonight, you have the most reasons to kill her. I don't know about that. You, Sir Grayson, have spent the entire evening vehemently trying to direct suspicion away from yourself and to any other channel that leads away from you. I've never seen a man so desperate to appear innocent. Th that's what I thought. That's what I felt. That's what I thought about Charlotta, actually. She seemed really desperate to accuse anybody besides herself and get the money. I can smell your desperation from here. <laughs> nice deflection away from my questions. I see what you did there. Perhaps Lady Diana will have more insight for us. Lady Diana? Huh? What's wrong? Oh, sorry. I just noticed the candle I've been carrying around has some wax that dripped down the candle holder and dried. So? Did you burn yourself, my lady? No, no, nothing like that. It's just there's a hair in the wax. Oh? A long, black hair. A hair exactly like Dorian's. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, that's rather simply explained. As anyone with long hair knows, it just simply gets everywhere! I find them in my clothes, on the floor, in my home. I shed like a golden retriever. Yes, I wear my hair up, but it too is quite lengthy, so I know the trials of long hair. Yet I've been the one carrying this candlestick around most of the night, as you pointed out earlier this evening. But your hair is the one that's stuck in the dried wax. And the fact that it's stuck in dried wax tells me you had the candlestick at some point this evening, and it was had enough time to dry with your hair on it. To me, that points to you using it as the murder weapon. Preposterous! It is no more preposterous than you accusing me of avenging a great uncle that I never knew. If anything, your accusations are just conjectures based on hearsay. Lady Diana has found concrete proof that connects you with the object that very well could be the murder weapon. How dare you! I don't have to stand here and listen to this! I don't trust him. We should probably go follow him. But when the three of us stumbled into the parlor, we found ourselves on a scene of a tumultuous verbal fight between Madame Esme and Miss Charlotta. That simply isn't true and you know it. I know nothing of the sort. All I know is you've been hanging around here quite a bit over the past few months. I believe you are hanging around looking for your opportunity to kill a Montague's and take the fortune for yourself. But no one even knew where Monty kept his fortune. How do you know? Because I was in love with him. Whoa. Oh, I did not expect that. Um, what? Listen, Montius, all you knew him, Mold Montague, was a very kind man. He always allowed my caravan to settle on his land. I got to know him over the last several months since we've been camped here. At first, he was just interested in buying some of my herbs that I gather for aches and pains, so I'd bring him a new batch every week. Sometimes, I would even stick around to read fortunes for Helena, who was interested in my work as a medium. Soon, it, it became like a, a daily part of my life here. I started to fall in love with him, and he too was in love with me. In fact, young Monty wasn't so old. He married young, had his daughter young, widowed young. That's why I found it strange he died of a heart attack. I was heartbroken, but more than that, I was suspicious. He had been a f relatively healthy man, and healthy men in the prime of their lives don't drop dead without warning. After losing my dear, dear Monty, I began to wonder, what really happened to him? It was then I suspected foul play. I knew if somebody killed Monty, it had to be someone in this house. So, I had narrowed it down to either Helena or Charlotta. <laughs> I decided I had to investigate, that's why I came here tonight. I knew that with the heavy rains, it'd be a chance I'd get stranded, unable to leave. I figured I could then figure out if Elena killed her father, after a lot had killed her employer. What I didn't expect was that Helena would be knocked off too. That, of course, narrows things down for me, but still I was cautious. I tried to make it look like I was unsure of who the killer is, because I didn't want to throw suspicion onto myself, so I played the game. I'll let you all bicker among yourselves, and even let you all expose any clues you might find. Finally, I felt satisfied. You, Miss Charlotta, are the killer of both Lord Montague and Helena Montague. The only thing I don't know is why. Why did you kill them? Money, money. Who 
But surely, madame, you do not think that I... Stop stalling and tell the truth. All the evidence points to you. What evidence? What evidence? I have so much evidence. If a policeman was standing in this room, he would arrest you without a second thought after he hears all that I have against you. First of all, we have the fact that Diana found your hairpin near the body tonight. Even you have to admit that's pretty incriminating. I admit no such thing. Secondly, you are the only one in the house who could have poisoned Monty. Poisoned? Who said anything about poison? No one, as of yet. That's what I'm about to reveal. You see, in the course of this evening, I sneaked into the kitchen. I had to make sure I found the one thing I was certain to find there. And I did. Under the kitchen sink, I found this bottle of rat poison. So what? Lots of country homes have rats. Not this one. I'm allergic to vermin, both the animal and the human kind. If there's a rat in this house, I would have had a reaction. Besides that, Monty and his daughter, not to mention yourself, Miss Charlotta, were clean and tidy people. No rat could survive in this pristine place. When I sneaked into the kitchen tonight, I found the bottle of poison just as I suspected. And just as I feared, the bottle was empty. There wasn't a trace left of the poison. I knew you poisoned Monty's food at dinner the night he was killed. You were the only one with opportunity and ability. Hi, oi. Oh, just save your breath for a second. I have more, probably the most convincing piece of evidence of all. Oh, what's that? Your alibi. My alibi? I never gave one. No, of course not. You were too smart to have one prepared. And besides, none of us are doctors. We had no way of knowing exactly when Helena was killed. However, I narrowed it down. The most likely time for Helena to be murdered was when all of us were in the house. So there was plenty of other people to pin the crime on. But you waited until you had a pretty full house. Since you had already noticed Violet lurking on the property, and you knew I made my nightly visit, even though Violet and I were thought we were just casual visitors, or we wanted to make it look that way, you already knew we would be there. Once we were in the house, the blackout happened. It seemed innocent, innocuous at first, because you've been experiencing blackouts due to the storms, but I realized it was a distraction. I didn't realize how well planned until I went to the kitchen and noticed two things. And what were those things? For starters, the breaker box is in the kitchen. I noticed some tape had been stuck to the breaker switches, one that controls the whole house. Upon further investigation, I noticed some yarn stuck under the kitchen window. The yarn seemed to be coming from the upstairs bedroom, Helena's bedroom. There are two pieces of yarn. One had tape onto it, the other tied to the window. Madam, this is nonsense. No, not the slightest. You rigged the kitchen so when you were upstairs, about to kill Helena, you could pull two strings from her bedroom. One pulled the breaker switch, knocking off all the lights, causing confusion downstairs and buying yourself some time. The other one opened the kitchen window so that it would swing open at the first breath of wind, knocking over the glass vase perched on the windowsill. That way everyone would assume you are still in the kitchen and not upstairs with Helena. Ooh, this is a good explanation. It was your audible alibi. Ah, I see, I've struck you silent at last. You aren't sure how to respond to any of this. Well, maybe this will put you over the edge. I plan to have Monty's body exhumed and autopsied. I have more than enough evidence to prove he was murdered. And once I do, if any trace of rat poison is found in his system, you'll be the one they go after, Miss Charlotta. Fine. Okay. I did it. I admit it. I hated the Montagues. Everyone thought they were so generous. All I ever heard was, oh, I'm so lucky to work for them at the Chateau. But there they were, sitting on their millions, and there I was, trying to keep my family alive. Sure, they paid me a living wage. They tried to help at times, but it was all selfish. Everything they did was to make themselves look good. Every little gift to the poor, every time they gave me a bonus, it was so they could show off to their friends and neighbors just how benevolent they were. I got sick of it. And that's when I concocted my plot. But to tell you that, I'll have to reveal my partner. Your partner? Yes! I'll even let you guess! Who is her partner? Oh my gosh, this is crazy times. 